What is going on guys, today I'm going to be showing you the cheap contrast node. There's cheap contrast, there's cheap contrast RGB, and there's cheap contrast per surf color. Now, these basically do what you'd see in Photoshop, where they uh, will contrast your texture or whatever you've plugged into it. Now, I use this for two different things. I use it to contrast my textures, which is a simple use for it, and I use it to also contrast my sort of masks. So... I'm gonna first show the texture front of it. So if we actually jump into this material that's applied to that guy right there, you can actually see it here, right? If we look here, I've got cheap contrast, cheap contrast RGB and contrast per serve color. To get them, just write, or just write contrast instead of cheap contrast. So you got cheap contrast, cheap contrast RGB and contrast per serve color. Just click one of them and it will come in. Now, cheap contrast is basically for black and white maps. If you actually plug in a color map to it, so if we plug this directly in, and let's turn this to zero, we'll actually just convert it to black and white if plugged straight in. And then you can turn it, if you plug in, if we move it here, if you plug in like a scalar right here or parameter and turn this value up, you will see it starts contrasting it. If the texture is too dark, it will just sort of bring it all down to black. So you can throw in an add, so A left click, plug that in. You can slightly increase that value. Let's increase it to 0.3 to help equalize out those areas. So now if we turn this up, maybe turn that down to 0.2. And something like that. You can start getting some values. Now this is actually really good if you've got a texture where you want to identify a part of it. So let's say all I had was a color map and it was like brickwork. If the brickwork had dark concrete in between the areas, what I could do if, if I wanted those areas to let's say i wanted the concrete to be slightly rougher than the um than the actual base color that the actual bricks i could contrast that out and then just use this as our roughness if we don't have a roughness map usually you'll have one though another use for a cheap contrast is basically to adjust masks right so if we look over here if i wanted to sharpen this so it's a sharper transition what I could do is get a linear gradient, put it to cheap contrast and contrast it. If I contrast it by like, let's say 0.5, and we actually just go to the plate, you'll see it'll get much, much harsher. If you go like 10, you can get it really sharp. If you go like a, in the same value, it'll literally just be black and white. Now, if you want it to be black and white, you'd usually just use a round instead, which would do a similar thing. But if you're looking for a sort of fading contrast, you'll use an actual cheap contrast and you can adjust that to where you want. Again, this is really great if you've got very specific masks and you want to sharpen them. A good example of where I've actually used this is I believe I used it on my water shader where I contrasted the uh, lines to be a bit sharper. If I rounded it, they'd be fully sharp, but if you contrast it, you can get it so they're just gonna fade on the edges. Now going back into the material, Cheap contrast, again, on the texture, makes it black and white. You could do something fancy and like multiply that result and that result together, I guess, and then plug that into there. And you can end up with like a, actually, because it's by black, it will just make it like white pieces there. But you can do something funky with that one. If you're using cheap contrast, which is preferably, uh, cheap contrast RGB, which is preferably what you'd be using uh, if you're trying to edit a colored texture. In. It's not plugged in yet. Bit, bit spaghetti right now, but that's plugged into there, and that's plugged into there, and then let's plug that into there. So it's clearly too high in the value. Let's turn that down a little bit. As we turn this up, it's very, very sensitive. Let's turn this up. So we've got a green. If we go zero point, let's say one, we'll start to see a contrast coming in. Now, if I actually just convert that, and we can go contrast, we can click apply. So to convert it, you so if you have a uh, a one constant, one left click to get it in, right click and convert. If you want it to be a, a scalar to begin with, hold S and left click. So yeah, grab that, that's already done. Click apply again, even though I shouldn't have to. And right click that, create an instance, throw that in there. Ooh, I don't even know what that is. And open that up and we'll have that in here. So now if I wanna look at this, I can slightly turn that value up. And it's again, a very sensitive, so 0.05 for example it depends on your texture depending on your texture it'll be uh 
more or less sensitive and if we actually go into another project i'll show you a better example of this so if we jump into the actual base material for this so we've got a bunch of stuff going on but right at the end i've got a cheap contrast rgb right now if i say oh i want the top of this with the metal so i've separated this out into a lot of material elements which i'm actually going to go over in another video but this cannon, this top part of cannon, this part here are all one element. So if I find that element, which is cannon top, and open it, and I say, oh, I want the orange to contrast a bit more. Now, I could do this in post-processing, but if I do it in post-processing, it's going to make everything get more contrasted. So if I just want that one material, as you saw in my base material, we have it set up here. I've got a scalar in called cheap contrast color. Let's go into my instance, which I already have applied. Make cheap contrast. As I turn this up, we'll contrast it more. Now that's a little too strong. You'll probably go something like, well, it depends. It depends what you want, really. Uh, I might go something like this, maybe even more, because it'll help emphasize some of those shadows, uh, and it'll bring this orange out a little bit more. So as you can see, zero, zero point seven five. Oh, zero point zero seven five. There you go, zero. So you can even go zero point one, whatever you want. Uh, if we actually go negative in this value, you'll get like a weird invert. If you go to a certain negative though, you'll basically just start of pulling your contrast down which is going to average out your colors so again like photoshop i think it goes to minus 0.5 yeah so it averages out your colors entirely and as you pull it even further it starts doing a weird invert and if you go really far up it will just contrast it more and more and more till it can't contrast anymore and then the last one which i never use is a cheap contrast oh not cheap contrast it's just contrast preserve color now if we plug it into here and here now maybe there's a different way you got to use this now but whenever you plug it straight in color i'm we'll looking at insane value oh that's a missing strength uh cheap contrast we plug it straight it looks like it kind of flattens the colors as you turn it up it'll start contrasting it back to sort of where you want maybe you'll find it a use for this one i tend to not use this one i tend to just use the rgb if i want to uh contrast the rgb but as you can see because it's applied to everything everything's sort of washed out now it's very strange and yeah that is basically the three contrast nodes um they are i can set it up in here as well just to show the difference on the grass texture so if we plug here, go into here, as you can see, it will sort of flatten that color. And as we turn it up, start contrasting. I guess it does what it says. Like at a value of one, it kind of looks back to normal. If we go 1.1, 1 .1, it kind of, uh, it, it kind of just makes it look darker rather than contrasting it. But there's probably some, a little bit extra going on there. And as we turn it, back down to a zero value it just gets really really bright again negatives you just go straight to white and that is the contrast nodes you there's so many different ways you can use this i always use it for masks if i want something to not have a really really sharp edge but i still want to be able to contrast it to make it a little bit sharper i will tend to use a cheap contrast node cheap contrast is probably one of my most used nodes in a lot of my shaders so yeah there's tons of ways you can use it i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and i catch you next time